Hello everyone, Matt from Model Minutes here and welcome back to the workbench for another unboxing. This time it is the Trumpeter P40B slash C in 170 second scale. So join me as I take a look inside the box and see what we've got. So starting off on the outside of the box, we've got this artwork of the P40 in Flying Tiger's colours in a dive through the clouds. Not necessarily the most exciting artwork out there, but still catches the eye. Up the top here, you can see that the English translation has struggled at times, but we will just carry on. So we've got the length of the aircraft at 134 millimeters, a wingspan of 158. There are 30 plus pieces, so they've just not told us exactly how many parts are in the kit, but there are three sprues. Down here, it's 172nd scale and there are some other warnings down the bottom as well. On this thin edge, we have some information about the actual P40, and then we've got an age rating of 14 plus, and it was imported by Backman. This product is not a toy, and it was made in China. On the thin edges, you can see it's the same kind of information we had on the front. However, the item code is 01632. Same on both sides. And also on the other thin edge, we've got a copyright date of 2020. And it tells us that there are two paint schemes included by the looks of it. However, I'm pretty sure that there's three paint schemes included because I've already had the box open because I love a P40. And that's the reason why I bought it. I have already built a few P40s, but I think all of them were Airfix. So I'm interested to see a different P40 from another company. But yeah. This is the one that caught my eye. It's a RAF version, but it's in the gray and green rather than the Battle of Britain colors that I've done it before. So let's get the box open and see what we've got. So let's put the plastic parts to one side. Let's put the transfers to one side. Let's put the painting instructions to one side and find the actual assembly instructions. So we've got some information here about uh, taking care, how to use the glue, etc. We've got a key to the symbols down the bottom, and we've got information on how to do the transfers. However, if you've built model kits before, you'll know exactly how to do them. We do have a sprue map. A sprue map is always great to have. Not only can we cross-reference it to make sure we've got all our parts, but also it helps us to identify which parts we need and where they are. We also have a decal sheet included. So move on to the assembly instructions. And we have black and white images, exploded diagrams, which seem to be relatively easy to follow. So it would seem that we assemble our cockpit first in step one, and there is a reasonable amount of detail in there to install, such as the control column, control panel, and the chair or the seat. And all the colors are called out, and I think they're Mr. Hobby colors. I may have missed something. Um, which I don't have. However, they have also given you a name for the colors, which is good. So flat black, field green. Um, I'll use a cockpit green for that. We move on, having assembled our cockpit, we glue it inside its mounting points in the fuselage, join the fuselage together and insert the tail wheel in the uh, rear of the aircraft and the engine exhausts, although I may leave the engine exhausts off until the end to make it easier to paint. We add the nose, which features our machine guns onto the top of the aircraft. And this seems to be building up in a very similar way to the Airfix one that I've done a number of times. Upper and lower wing surfaces get joined together. Then we join our wheels onto their landing gear legs. Interestingly, the hubs are separate parts. And turn over the page, we have our landing gear doors, which we can install here, and our engine air intake. We then add our undercarriage and also the exhaust flaps here for the radiator. But it seems to me that there's only one choice. Quite often this exhaust will be either in an open or closed position, but here it looks like they only have it in a closed. We assemble our propeller by joining the spinner and the backing plate and sandwiching over the top. And then we install that to the aircraft. But before we do that, we have to put on this part here. However, it makes no indication that this is going to be a rotating propeller. Um, I will have to investigate that as we go through the build. But we have 
a two part front of the cockpit and then we've got our side windows as well and we also need to add on our tail surfaces so not an overly complicated kit instructions are relatively easy to follow and i don't think there'll be any issues with that so let's look at the painting instructions then so we have let's start with a a is the first one and it is for a p40b slash c kitty hawk so yes it's a mr color paints mr hobby mr color um but yeah you can pick whichever paints are suitable i've already done a flying tigers version of the airfix kit so i'll have these probably as spare transfers lying around interestingly there is a part b to part a and part b is for a russian version of the aircraft which is presumably under the lend lease program it looks to be this is similar it's similar colors but they're not quite the same. So I think these were like the RAF green and brown, whereas these were similar matches, but they weren't quite the same. These being a little bit lighter, these being a little bit more vibrant. Um, but yeah, so we have a Lend-Lease Russian inclusion in the kit. However, you'll notice that the instruction sheets don't give you a great deal of information. They don't give you any historical context or background regarding these aircraft. So if you didn't know this was a Flying Tigers aircraft, then it doesn't tell you. Additionally, I'm making the assumption that this is a Lend-Lease Russian aircraft because it again doesn't tell us. Something you probably have to look up. Anyways, the scheme that I want to do is this one and it is for an RAF version and it has the light grey lower side and dark grey and dark green uppers as well. So I do have paints for that in the stash somewhere and it's more interesting than the other P40s that I've done. It is good though that these are in full colour because it makes it a bit easier to understand what's going on. However, I have noticed here that we've got yellow leading edges on the wings here, but they don't seem to be uh, mentioned. They don't seem to be a transfer and they don't seem to have a paint colour call out for that. So I um, would have to figure out my own paint for that. But yeah, painting instructions, not too bad. We have our transfers in a sealed bag. So let's get that out. So let's get these out and they are taped. They are taped together. So let's try and make sure that they're not taped. Right. And transfers. So we have a copyright date down the bottom of 2007. Spoilers. Um, that's when this kit dates from. It doesn't necessarily mean that my version was produced in 2007, but um, in essence, this is the only boxing that I'm aware of from Trumpeter of this kit. And these are the decals included. Um, so we have our RAF version here. And is it me or do they seem very vibrant? The blue and the red, they seem much more vibrant than uh, normal RAF uh, transfers that I've had. The red stars for the Russian version. And then we have our Flying Tigers version over here. Down the bottom, we've got our control panel and our various sort of stencils uh, for around the aircraft. I have used trumpeter transfers before. I used them on an F-86 in 144th scale. They were okay from my recollection. They do look a little thick. They have generally quite good registration so the red dots are mostly central but they look to my eyes um, and i don't know if you'll agree but they look ever so slightly especially these ones here to be up on the left more on the top left of the circle so there's more white down the bottom right so registration isn't perfect but the printing is generally acceptable there's no tears that i can see and the opacity looks good as well and the text down here is relatively legible as well. So I have had worse transfers in the past, but uh, these are not necessarily the highest quality transfers out there, but they should do the job. So the main event then, the plastic parts. As I quite like to do, let's look at the clear parts first. And we have one little, little sprue and they are molded to a good quality. We've got our front windshield, our cockpit canopy, the little windows that go on the side of the fuselage, that one has its holes for the fuel tank uh, fillers, possibly a landing light or something there, and they look okay. 
the plastic is generally pretty clear. There are some scratches and blemishes just on these ones here. They might not show up particularly too well in the video, uh, but generally not too bad, not much in the way of flash. The molded details are raised uh, quite pronounced so that when you come to mask this, if you want to, you should be able to get a knife on there, no problem, uh, to cut around your masking tape to get it down nice and easy. Tiny little bit of flash in a few places, actually, now I, I look at it, um, but manageable, not bad, not bad. We then move on to our main part. So not overly complicated. There's not a lot of parts in this kit. These are molded in a browny, olivey gray. It's not a, it's got a slight, slight green tinge to it, but um, maybe not pick it up too well on the video there. But looking at this, it seems to have quite nice details. So if we have a look here at the fuselage tail, for example, let's get the light to catch it just right. The, um, the tail, where is the light? Oh, maybe about there. Um, the tail it, on here, has, I think they were fabric covered, these moving surfaces here. So you can sort of see the texture of it and the, the ribs underneath, which is very nice indeed. The panel lines are recessed and there are little rivet details in a few places. Plastic is quite smooth. It doesn't feel overly greasy. Um, it feels quite hard. There is a little bit of bend to it. There is a small amount of flash in a few places, which will need cleaning off. Flip over to the inside. We've got a little bit of internal cockpit detail there, which is all right. And the other details on here, uh, engine exhaust, spinner, cockpit components, the uh, control panel is a reasonable representation, spinner parts, tail wheel, control column, nose gums, and propeller, air intake, cockpit floor. Other half of the fuselage, yeah, looks all right. I did notice when I was going through the instructions though, it doesn't make any reference to having the landing gear in a raised position. So you would need to make modifications to this kit if you wanted to have the landing gear raised because that option doesn't seem to be included. Additionally, there is no pilot figure. So if you wanted to have this flying, again, that would not be an option. So coming down to the lower wing surfaces here, again, mold quality is good. A little bit of flash in a few places. Plastic is a little bit smooth. Touch, feels a touch more greasy on this one, but it's uh, it's okay. And a few little rivet details as well on the wings there, which is uh, a nice addition. The tail surfaces are similar to the rudder. You can see they've got a molded representation there of the fabric covering uh, over the top of the spars. And then we come on to the top wings. So this is slightly different to the Airfix kit because the Airfix kit, if I remember correctly, doesn't necessarily have these um, recessed rivet details on the top of the wings. I think they just have the panel lines. But on the whole, this does seem to have a very similar layout to the Airfix kit. They are different kits. They are completely different toolings. They're not related, um, but I guess there are only so many ways you can logically design the same kit to be, to be honest, depending on which details you want to pick out. Pitot tube here on the wing, for example, that's molded on. So I'd have to be gentle and careful with that. But yeah, looking uh, looking pretty decent. I'm looking forward to having a crack at this one because I love building a P40. So let's round off. What did we have? We had two olivey green kind of gray sprues with some nicely detailed parts. We are lacking the option to have landing gear raised. And also there is a bit of flash in a few places which may need addressing. Clear parts are completely fine as well. No issues there. We also had our transfers for our three different decal schemes. Um, not necessarily the best quality transfers out there, uh, but my eyes have picked up a little bit of a deregistration issue on the red dots, but on the whole, they should be completely usable. Our painting instructions are printed in full color, which is fantastic to see because it just makes things a little less ambiguous. And our instructions, although printed in black and white, they do seem logical and relatively easy to follow. All of that comes contained within a, a box. It comes inside a box with this artwork on the front, but 
truth be told, it wasn't the artwork that caught my eye, it was the paint scheme here, because I want to do that one. It is nice though, that you do get the other paint schemes inside the box, so you've got a bit of extra value, and sometimes we are paying for that choice. I would be interested in doing this one as the RAF version, and if I can get the Airfix Tomahawk cheap, I know that sometimes Audi and Lidl uh, here in the UK tend to have them on as a special deal, then I could potentially get a couple and do the Russian Lend Lease version and another Flying Tiger. So that would be interesting, wouldn't it? I could do a double build with those. But I'm not sure if I should because I already have loads of uh, Tomahawks. But uh, yeah, that is an option. It's an option we could explore. And how much did I pay for this? Well, you can see on the box I paid £12.60 which seems to be in line with the prices that this is going for here in the UK. I have seen online a few places a little bit cheaper, around the £12 mark, but I've also seen other places selling it for a little bit more, around the £17 or £18. It has a very similar mould quality and design to the Airfix version, which is a, I think it's a slightly newer version, the Airfix one. Airfix naturally have cartograph decals, which this doesn't. And I think the Airfix version is slightly cheaper. However, you are getting three decal schemes in the box here, whereas the Airfix one usually only comes with one. And again, you're probably paying for that choice. As mentioned earlier, 2007 was the copyright date we had on the decals. That's because this is a 2007 tooling. So not too bad for 2007 tooling, pretty decent. But as far as I can tell, this has only ever been released as this uh, boxing. We've got a copyright date of 2020 on there, so I imagine that's when mine was physically manufactured. So my kit is about three years old now. On the whole though, I'm looking forward to having a go at this and seeing how it compares to other Tomahawks that I've built. Let me know in the comments what you thought of my unboxing and if my assessment of this kit was fair. And as always, a quick shout out to my channel members and patrons for the extra support they give the channel. A massive thanks to these guys on screen. To find out more about how you can become a member of the club, take a look at the links in the description. Down in the description, you'll also find other ways to help support the channel if you'd like to do so. However, the best way to support the channel for free is by subscribing with notifications on so you never miss a modeling upload. Finally though, the last thing to say is a massive thank you to you for watching this one, and I'll see you on the workbench again next time.